unintentional. How could such an egregious action be unintentional? This whole situation is disgusting, and I hope that the officer is held to the furthest extent of the law and held accountable and prosecuted accordingly. Hey, what's up, guys? Long Island Audit here, back again with another video. So someone sent me this story and I felt compelled to cover it. It is very egregious. Viewer discretion is definitely advised. So let's get into it. Let's take a look at the reporting here. Police officer is suspended and charged with rape and sexual assault. Our Sonica Barco joins us with our follow-up tonight. Sonica. Alicia, Valerie, Justin Hain has been with the Steelton Police Department less than two months. Now he's in Dauphin County Prison facing multiple felony charges. In any field, there are going to be people that commit uh, grievous offenses. In this case, a Steelton police officer, according to the... In any field, that was the prosecutor saying in any field, there's obviously people who are going to do egregious crimes and, and engage in egregious behavior. Uh, it just seems to me, maybe because I'm the one hyper-focusing on law enforcement and the government, is that our government officials are the ones normally engaged in all this type of egregious behavior and nothing ever really comes of it and they're never really held accountable but we'll see here charges filed by state police in Likens. justin hayne raped a woman while she was feeding her child we need to uh take action very very quickly to ensure that they're not continuing uh to uh, carry a gun and carry a badge uh and potentially abuse their power Court documents say the woman told police she told Hain to stop and hit him multiple times. She says at one point, Hain pushed her head into the couch and she couldn't move. According to the criminal complaint, the woman then waited for Hain to go to work before going to a friend's house and calling police. The bravery of the, of the victim uh, is, is imperative and is remarkable. She uh, did a phenomenal job in bringing about justice so that someone else won't be victimized. Investigators later asked the woman to call Hain and recorded that conversation. The criminal complaint says Hain repeatedly apologized and said, quote, I didn't intentionally rape you. Hain is now in Dauphin County Prison on $50,000 bail. One condition if he makes bail is to have no contact with the victim. We asked for more specificity to make it clear that they couldn't come within any uh, distance, uh, specified distance of the victim her home, uh, her place of work. Hain is facing charges of rape, deviant sexual intercourse, and two counts of sexual assault, as well as two other misdemeanor charges. His preliminary hearing will be held next week. Absolutely disgusting. I mean, let's continue to read here. So it says right here that, hold on, let's pull up a little bit. Um, Police said woman, the woman told them that Hain approached her when she got out of the shower with a, quote, weird grin, and she told him not to touch her. Hain then pulled the woman's towel off and pinned her to a couch before sexually assaulting her while she repeatedly told him no, the affidavit said, according to Penn Live. The woman then waited for Hain to go to work before contacting police at a friend's house. The document said she called Hain on Wednesday and told him, she shouldn't have to fear to being raped in her own home. Quote, I'm deeply sorry, Haynes said, according to the affidavit, I didn't intentionally rape you. I don't even know what that means. I, 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 it's just, it's very disgusting and it's so disingenuous and I don't even know how to respond to I didn't intentionally rape you. I really just don't. When she asked Hain why he continued to have sex with her after she told him to stop he replied that he knew the woman was not quote not into it he knew she was quote not into it it's probably one of my deplorables one of my things quote it's probably one of my deplorables one of my things end quote this is things that former officer haynes said on a audio recording ladies and gentlemen this is things that he said himself it's one of his things to sexually assault a woman. I don't understand. This is how did this man become a police officer? He was only a police officer at this department for a couple months, but he was an uh, officer at a, a prior department. 
earlier for, I believe, five years, if I'm not mistaken. Dolphin County District Attorney um, said he worked for the department for less than two months when he was arrested. But again, I, I believe that when I investigated it, they said something that he was an officer for five years before this. Stilton Mayor Sierra Dent told the outlet Hain was suspended from the police department following the charges. Oh, suspended. That's great. I mean, I don't understand how he's not fired. He admitted to a sexual assault on recording and apologized for it and said he didn't intentionally do it, whatever that means. And he was just suspended. I guess that's how these things work. Um, again, any other career field, ladies and gentlemen, you'd be fired 100%. But police are heroes, right? And this is why I show things like uh, stories like this and cover stories like this is because police are apparently heroes. I hear it all the time from bootlickers and sheep and people who just want to worship the police and put them on a pedestal. You know, they're, they're, they're apparently heroes, All every single one of them. In any field, there are going to be people who commit grievous offenses. Sure. I agree with the special prosecutor that definitely would be in any field, but it seems to be more law enforcement that are engaged in egregious offenses, um, such as violating people's rights, etc. When that occurs, we need to take action very, very quickly to ensure that they are not continuing to carry a gun and carry a badge and potentially abuse their power. I agree 100%. The Steelton Borough Police Department did not immediately return a request for comment. Court records do not indicate whether Hain was represented by an attorney. A judge set Hain's bail at $50,000 according to court records. $50,000. $50,000 for four felony charges and two misdemeanors of the, one of the most egregious crimes you can commit, in my opinion, uh, which is sexual assault. And $50,000, but yet there are activists being held with no bail. There are, you know, I was held on a $10,000 bond for recording in a public building. Uh, just seems a little ridiculous, you know. Recording in a public building's ten thousand. Sexual assault is fifty thousand dollars, and you're free to go. Just don't go to that woman's house anymore. Um, yeah, absolutely disgusting, ladies and gentlemen. And the, the reason why I want to talk about this is because this was this is not getting like any major, major news coverage. So I wanted to definitely cover it and expose this man for the, um, you know criminal and sexual deviant that he is you know it's one of his, in his own words it's one of his you know things quote one of his things you know he's just one of those he's called himself deplorable you know we can agree there definitely um so i also wanted to you know we talk about heroes right we talk about police being heroes and everything so you know i was thinking why how are police heroes right i wanted to get to the bottom of exactly how are police heroes why does everybody think that they're heroes so I, I was like maybe their job is really really dangerous law enforcement has a that's what we hear a lot right law enforcement has a dangerous job right so i looked up the top 25 dangerous jobs in the united states and again this is according this is data this is all everything i'm about to tell you is is facts from uh you know statistics from the department of labor so the top 25, let's see here. Number one has to be police officer, right? Nope. Logging workers. Okay. They're the number one dangerous job in the United States. Okay. Number two, police. Nope. Aircraft pilots and flight engineers. Number three, derrick operators uh, in oil, gas, and mining. Okay. Number four, roofers. Roofers. Are roofers heroes? Because their job is way more dangerous than a law enforcement officer's job. So it's, is their job dangerous? That means they're heroes, right? And they're you know, they're deserving of all of our praise and admiration because they're heroes. Roofers, are they heroes? Garbage collectors, number five, are they heroes? Uh, do we consider them just heroes, iron workers, delivery drivers, farmers, firefighting? Mm, there you go, firefighting. I consider a firefighter over uh, a hero over a law enforcement officer any day of the week. Power linemen, agricultural workers where is law enforcement i thought this job was super super dangerous i thought this was like a job that you know you just get it and you're just putting your life on the line every single day uh crossing guards um crane operator nope nope construction helpers landscaping supervisors highway maintenance workers cement masons small engine mechanics supervisors of mechanics heavy vehicle mechanics ground maintenance workers let's see here 22 police officers there you go number 22 of the most dangerous jobs but yet they police officers are put on pedestals throughout this country that is heroes and first responders and everything else but they're not 
it's not even close to the top, one of the top dangerous jobs in the United States, right? Not even close. Roofing is one of the dangerous, are they considered heroes? So let's see here. Um, let's take a look at this. So maybe it's because, let me zoom in a little bit here. I know you guys probably can't see. I'm going to read it anyway. So, you know, I asked artificial intelligence, since they have access to the whole internet uh, and all the statistics here, and it'll show you. Um, what is it, how it, does police, do police officers solve crimes? And according to a 2020, excuse me, hold on one second. According to a 2021 law review article, police have never consistently solved crimes. So I thought maybe if they're not a dangerous job, maybe it's because they solve crimes, a lot of crimes never and have never solved even a majority of serious crimes again police have never consistently solved crimes and never solved a, even a majority of serious crimes according to crime science the, the deterrence hypothesis is just a casual relationship between the presence of police stations and crime so if we go down here let's um just go down on the page a little bit according to 2022 statistics the police department solved 35 37 percent of violent crimes so not even half, just over half of murders and non-negligent um, manslaughters, 12% of property crimes. According to the FBI, the rates at which police officers, police forces are solving crimes has plunged to historic lows. For example, in 2021, the NYPD saw 56% of homicide cases, down from 64% in 2020 and 71. So they're not getting better at solving crime. They've always been consistently bad at solving crime. The numbers are dismal for solving crime. So what do police officers do with the majority of their day that's not dangerous and they're not solving crime? Well, you've experienced it. Each and every one of us experiences. They write us tickets, right, for having a brake light out, going five miles over the speed limit, you know, slow rolling a stop sign. That is what police officers do. They're revenue. I want everybody to understand this. They are revenue generators for the county or the city they are um, generating millions and millions of dollars in traffic citations for the city that's what they that is their main function and if you don't believe me i just showed you the statistics they're not primarily crime fighters it's not an inherently inherently dangerous job and i say all of this just as facts, right? I have friends, good friends of mine that are in law enforcement and i say this all the time i've worked with their departments from ohio to uh, New Bergen, New Jersey. I have friends that are in law enforcement, but if they, and I, and I know them well enough to know that they, they are genuine and they do the right thing. But if they did something wrong, I would call them out. I have no loyalty to anyone other than you, the United States constitution. That's where I hold my loyalty in the, we, the people. So, you know, and I'm saying this because this applies to them too. It's not the, the it's the statistics, ladies and gentlemen. And and that's the real problem here is that, and then when police officers do like Sergeant Brian Fahey, Connecticut State Police, stay tuned. I'll be having updates on that. When, when they do create, when they do commit crimes, a lot, a lot of the time they're not held accountable. We see it all the time. They're not indicted. They get, you know, investigated by themselves and find no, no wrongdoing. It happens all the time. This channel is proof of it and other channels across the internet and other uh, journalists across the internet prove it every single day. So again, don't tell me that all law, law enforcement officers are heroes because they're not. A hero is something that's earned, not just because you have a job title. They're not crime, primarily crime solvers. They are ticket writers, just like a meter maid would, and they are not inherently a dangerous job. So again, just if we can get all of that off, I know some of you want to just obey authority and obey, you know, government and, and be one of those sheep and bootlickers, but, you know, just try and stick up for your own independence. Try and understand that our freedom is way more important than anything else. We need to stick together. We, the people need to stick together and hold law enforcement accountable and affect change. And the law enforcement officers that I'm friends with, they come on my channel. They come on, they have their own public platforms like detective Matt Thornton, and they speak out against tyranny and corruption. And speaking of speaking out against tyranny and corruption, I have an exclusive video that I want to share with each and every single one of you. But first one second here, let me pull this up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there's a code. You don't talk. I don't know if you guys remember the female officer here. Her name is Lacey Gonzalez and she is, um, on either side of her are her co-workers, and that is the chief over there to the left. I conducted an exclusive interview with all three of these officers, as well as their attorney, and I will be exclusively uploading that to my Facebook page, a new Facebook page I, I created. If you're watching on my old Facebook page, 
Long Island Audit Inc. has 350 over 300. We accumulated over 350,000 Patriots on that on that page, only for it to be shadow banned. So I've been shadow banned on that page. I started a new page. We only have 400. We need to get to 10,000. That's the goal. 10,000 followers on that new Facebook page. You know, I have no loyalty to any single uh, social media outlet or platform. I try and be active on all social media platforms because I want this message of we the people and holding tyranny in our government accountable to reach every single person in this country. And, you know, I see it every day. It's reaching a lot of people where people stop me at the supermarket. People are stopping me on audits. And it's actually beautiful. And people appreciate what, what we're trying to accomplish here. But we need to have as much reach as possible. So the, the new, if you use Facebook, please go follow the uh new facebook page it will say new facebook page in the bio it's not long island audit inc anymore it's just long island audit it will be in the comment section of this video as well as the description there'll be a link to it and i will be exclusively uploading this interview it's an hour-long interview it's already uploaded i believe it was scheduled to upload at 6 15. so yes it is currently already uploaded i will leave the link to the video it's they go in on everything this police chief was tasing people holding guns to people's faces. I will be, if you don't use Facebook, I understand. I'm not trying to force you to use any single platform. I'm just trying to grow my reach throughout all social media platforms. But if you don't, you could wait until tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, the video at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time will be uploaded for everybody to see. So you can do that. Let me see here. So this is the new Facebook page right here. We already got a bunch of people following. This is, uh, as you know, we're live right now. So we have 473, fo 473 followers. My The Facebook page, Long Island Audit Inc., I have, we accumulated over 350,000 patriots and tens of millions of views every single month only for Facebook that's run by robots to tell me that I was being shadow banned for unoriginal content. I don't understand what that means. But it's impossible to fix anything with Facebook, ladies and gentlemen. So here we are. Here's the the new Facebook page here, Long Island Audit. I will leave the link in the comment section below. And as you can see, let's uh, refresh this really quick. Let's see if we can get that that exclusive interview that just uh, dropped at 6.15. So here it is right here. This is the exclusive interview with Lacey Gonzalez, Evan Downey, and Paul Cepeda, and their attorney. Adam Murray. It's an hour long interview where we go into the details. This, this, I already did a, um, a, a like a story earlier on this, but it, it was absolutely, you know, we just covered a local news report that somebody had sent me. And then um, these officers reached out to me and they wanted to come out and speak. And that's really important. They came out and spoke the truth for an hour with me and they told on everything that was going on in their department. They blew the whistle on everything. So this is the video right now. It is now live on my new Facebook page. It says new official page, Facebook page of LIA. Go check it out. 498 followers already. Let's try and get to 10,000. I know it's not going to be easy. And if you don't have Facebook, I understand. I, as a social media um, journalist and independent journalist, I have to use every single platform, whether it's my website, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. I use all platforms in order to spread this message. And if you don't use Facebook, that's fine. It's just exclusive until tomorrow morning. You can catch it tomorrow morning at YouTube. But definitely go take a look at it. Go follow. I'm going to be in the comment section talking to each and every single one of you. Very excited about this interview. It's, it's another step in our journalism, right? We've done trainings at police departments across the country. Another police department actually just reached out to me and wants to do another training. So stay tuned for that. So, you know, I'm grateful for all that we have accomplished here, ladies and gentlemen. I really am. I'm grateful for everything that we've accomplished, that none of this can be done without each and every single one of you. And, you know, go if you want to help out and support the Long Island Audit um, platform in general, not just, not just on YouTube, we're everywhere. And if you want to go support that, the links to Instagram, TikTok, the new Facebook page are all going to be in the description below. So I really appreciate your support on that. Let me see if I got a, let me look, take a look at some comments here. We got some new members, Paisley, uh, YouTube channel member, Sherry Bard. Thank you. Anthony Hummer. Thanks for the $20. Appreciate that. Tried to message you. VA Supreme Court has mandated that the courthouses will allow PDs and recording to public lobbies. Yes, courthouses in Hampton Roads still don't allow it. I will definitely, Gilly, I'll definitely check back in. Thanks for the um, super chat. But uh, all right, guys, 
Let me know what you think about this despicable story that we covered here today, as well as let me know what you think about the interview in the comment section. Remember, it's going to be uploaded tomorrow at 10 a.m. on YouTube. Like, comment, and share the, on this video. Go follow me. The new Facebook page will be in the description and the comment section. I really appreciate it. As always, stay safe. God bless. I'll see you in the next one. Long Island Audit. Peace.